I'm standing in Eaton Square. It's in the heart of West London, the real magnet for all the oligarchs of the world. This is where they want to live. After the Soviet Union collapsed, a small number of people made a huge amount of money and they wanted to put it somewhere. And London's got everything going for it. We've got great houses, great schools, great time zone, great language, great courts, and police agencies that don't ask too many questions about where money came from. Who wouldn't want to put their money here? Money doesn't come directly here, it normally goes through a number of different countries, but once it gets here, it's anonymous. It's owned via a shell company somewhere, the individual's name is taken off it. And once it's here, it can be spent on anything. You can take it to an auction house, buy art, take it to an estate agent, buy a mansion, you know, take it to a school, pay school fees, take it to the government, buy a visa. Oligarchs don't stop being oligarchs just because they've left Russia and come to Britain. They want the same things they have at home. They want access to politicians. They want preferential treatment under the law. They want journalists muzzled. They want everything to be on their terms and that is not how democracy works you know, by selling them property here by selling them access to our system we are essentially selling a little bit of ourselves and eventually if we keep selling it we won't have anything left if you're rich you're used to getting what you want when you pay for it and if you're giving six-figure sums to politicians you're not doing that out of the kindness of your heart. You're doing that because you want something in return. We don't know what they want in return. We don't know what the deals have been cooked up behind closed doors. And we really need to know that. We need proper limits on who can give money to political parties. That there need to be fit, fit and proper people. And we need transparency about whatever deals are being done in return. It, it's a disgrace we don't have that. Many of Putin's closest friends have property right here in London. Um, they move their money through London. If we sanction them, we will be affecting Kremlin calculations. We will also be costing ourselves a lot of money. And that is a problem for the government. They don't want to harm the economy, but they also don't want to let Putin do what he likes. They have to make a choice. And sadly, to date, that choice has consistently been made in favor of allowing the money here and not in favor of stopping Putin doing what he wants. You can't sanction something if you don't know where it is. A lot of this property, we don't know who owns it because it's anonymous. So the sanctions are meaningless anyway. The second point is, if you're a Russian oligarch and we're sanctioning the Russian economy, more than half of your wealth is outside of Russia. You don't care. Your Picassos, your super yachts, your mansions, they're all safe. They're not going to go down in value because Russia's been hit. You know, essentially, what Britain has offered to Russian oligarchs is they can sit and, in Moscow and treat war as a spectator sport. It doesn't harm them and they really don't mind. We need transparency. We need to know who owns what. Because if, if ownership is transparent, it's very hard for people who live on stolen wealth to continue to do so. That's one. The second one is we need proper resourcing of our law, law enforcement bodies. At the moment, the National Crime Agency, the Serious Fraud Office and the Met are starved of resources and they can't afford to go after the oligarchs. That's absurd. What's at stake is the future of democracy. There is a fundamental tension between the interests of the very wealthy and the interests of everyone else. And right now, the government is consistently favouring the interests of the very wealthy and not the interests of the rest of us. And that is unsustainable if we want democracy to survive.